Hey everybody, welcome to The Mill Nowhere. Today we're going to be talking about Gigabyte's extremely budget-friendly B450M DS3H motherboard. Originally released at the end of July of 2018 for the consumer-friendly price of $69.99, it's been more consistently priced at of late at $72.99. That's if you can find it in stock. Add the general horribleness of 2020 and sprinkle in a bit of, well, nothing's in stock anywhere, and you'll be lucky if you can find this motherboard for anywhere from about $76 to $79. I myself was able to find it for $76.99 at BNH, and my advice, don't pay more than $77 for this motherboard, as starting at the $79 price mark, you can find motherboards with more features. Again, if they're in stock. So, what's in the box? Upon opening the box, you'll find the motherboard. Let's make some more noise, right? Uh, it does come in an anti-static bag, which is always a nice thing. That is just held on by tape, and we'll get to this in a second. Lifting the cardboard insert, we find what else comes in the box. All right. Get an IO shield, two SATA cables, one with the right angle connector, the antiquated driver disc. You can use this if you need to, but I definitely recommend, as always, go to the Gigabyte's website to get the updated drivers. You get a user manual. This is very thin and not a full manual, so keep that in mind. There are, however, QR codes, so you can take your smartphone or tablet and scan them to get more information about the motherboard. And there's also a full manual available in the support section of the product page, and I'll put the link to that in the description. And then finally, you get a multilingual installation guide. Again, for any questions, in-depth questions regarding this motherboard while you're trying to uh, build your PC, definitely defer to that installation, or uh, excuse me, user manual. It will help you a lot. The DS3H is a modest motherboard that seems to want to blend in rather than stand out, and that's not a bad thing. You won't find any garish reds or bright oranges here. The motherboard is black with gray accent stripes reminiscent of circuit traces that travel from the edge of the motherboard, making their way to the CPU socket. We get it. The DS3H is a no-frills, bottom-of-the-barrel budget motherboard. So what makes it worth purchasing? Well, let's go over the features and find out. The B450M DS3H is an MATX motherboard and measures 244mm by 215mm. This is a departure from the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M and ASRock B450M Pro 4 motherboards I previously reviewed, as both of those have the same length and width of 244mm. As with all B450 motherboards, if you're using a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, be sure the box says AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. Don't see that sticker? You'll have to update the BIOS before your Ryzen 3000 CPU will work. If you don't have a Ryzen 2000 or 1000 CPU on hand, either take the motherboard to a retailer to see if they can provide the update for you, or get a loaner CPU from AMD. As my DS3H has the sticker, it will support Ryzen CPUs all the way up to the flagship 3950X, which is pretty nice for such an inexpensive motherboard. There are four DIMM slots on the motherboard, and you can install up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM. Out of the box, you can install RAM with speeds of 2133, 2400, 2667, and 2933MHz. And the following speeds can be set via XMP or through a manual overclock, 3200, 3466, and 3600. Additionally, there is support for ECC and non-ECC unbuffered memory. One of the things I like about this motherboard and Gigabyte's B450 Aorus M that I previously looked at is the support for that fast 3600 speed RAM. This is the sweet spot for Ryzen 3000 CPUs and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 is very affordable right now. Even if you're only using two sticks of RAM, you'll definitely want to take advantage of the dual channel speeds this motherboard provides. Be sure to install your RAM into the DDR4-1 and DDR4-2 sockets to enable dual channel mode. This is essentially the second and fourth slot on your motherboard. For those of you who love the rainbow goodness or choose your own color approach to RGB, you're going to be disappointed. Unfortunately, there is only one 4-pin 12-volt RGB header, but it can be controlled through Gigabyte's RGB Fusion 2.0 software. Officially labeled LED CPU, you can plug in any 4-pin RGB connector from a strip or fan to it. However, it doesn't support the AMD Wraith Prism cooler as that uses addressable RGB lighting. The lack of an ARGB header is disappointing, but not entirely unexpected. Having this feature is more of a nice to have than a necessity since its presence does not affect performance, contrary to popular belief. Even one plain old RGB header is probably more than we should expect at the DS3H's price point. 
There are two fan headers in total. They are both 4-pin PWM and are hybrid fan headers. This means you can control just about anything that uses the header to cool your PC, such as an AIO, a pump, a CPU fan, or a case fan. I would have liked one additional fan header. I definitely recommend either buying some fan splitters or a fan hub to accommodate more than one case fan, as one header will be taken by the CPU cooler. There are a total of four SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors, and there is support for RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 10 as well. You'll also find one M.2 connector that supports a variety of M.2 drive lengths. You can use it for either SATA or PCIe 3.0 by 4 M.2 SSD. It is a socket 3 M key type, so be sure that any SSD you buy is compatible with this slot. Unlike the B450 Aorus M, it does not appear that you'll lose any SATA port functionality when you use an M.2 drive. At least I couldn't find any exclusions in the expanded manual found online. There are a total of three PCI slots. One PCI Express 16 slot at 16 speed. This is a PCI Express 3.0 slot, and you'll want to insert your graphics card here. The remaining two slots are both PCI 2.0. There is one PCI Express by one slot and one PCI Express by four slot that is 16 in length. The DS3H does support AMD Quad GPU and two-way crossfire, but you cannot run NVIDIA GPUs in SLI. Now onto the internal I.O. You can find the 24-pin ATX main power connector on the right side of the motherboard and the 8-pin ATX 12-volt power connector at the top left. Nearly all the internal I.O. is at the bottom of the motherboard. And left to right, we have our front panel audio header, the SPDIF out header, a trusted platform module or TPM header, one serial port header, two USB 2.0 slash 1.1 headers, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, the front panel header, and above that, the clear CMOS jumper. There are no debug LEDs to let you know if something has gone wrong, so any troubleshooting may prove difficult and definitely time consuming. When it comes to the integrated audio on the DS3H, it uses the Realtek ALA87 audio codec that supports 2, 4, 5.1, or 7.1 channel high definition audio. There is also support for SPDIF out. To make use of this motherboard 7.1 surround sound capabilities, you need an HD front panel audio module and you need to enable the multi-channel audio feature through the audio driver. One of the things I do like, and I've seen it on other motherboards, is the audio noise guard with LED trace path lighting. Essentially, this is a trace that helps separate the audio components from other bits of the motherboard to reduce noise and interference with your audio. The result? A cleaner listening experience. Let's talk power delivery. It's four plus three phase, and as with the Aorus M, Gigabyte calls it a hybrid digital power design. The main benefit being lower temperatures on the MOSFETs. Also like the Aorus M, there's only one heat sink and it's on the CPU section of the BRM. The SOC area is left exposed and will rely on your system's passive cooling and case fans to cool it. This shouldn't be an issue too much if you're using a discrete GPU, but there could be some potential problems or heat issues if you are using an APU such as 3200 or 3400G. If you're using a stock cooler to a Ryzen CPU or a third-party cooler that also blows air down on the board, this should help keep those exposed MOSFET temperatures down. There's actually a fair amount of rear I.O. on this motherboard, which is quite surprising given its price point. On the back, you're going to find a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, display inputs, including one DVI-D port supporting a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hz. The DVI-D port does not support D sub connection by adapter. You have one HDMI port supporting a maximum resolution of 4096 by 2160 at 60 Hz. Support for HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2, but varies by CPU. If you use an APU, you can share a maximum of 16 gigabytes of your onboard memory. What this means is the Vega integrated GPU can utilize some of the memory from the RAM you install to boost graphics performance. You can change the settings within the BIOS. There are a total of eight USB ports, including four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and four USB 2.0 or 1.1 ports. You get a gigabit ethernet port using the Realtek GBE LAN chip that supports 10, 100, and 1000 megabits. For rear audio, there are three inputs on the back. The blue input is your line in or rear speaker out port. The green input is the line out or front speaker out port. And the pink input is the mic in or center or subwoofer speaker out port. And that's it. There are some other features that this motherboard comes with as well, such as hardware monitoring, so you can know, you know, how well your temperatures are doing, whether or not your fans are moving, if your computer's overheating, etc., etc. There's also some unique features that include uh, app support for QFlash, Express Install, which allows you basically to update your BIOS without a CPU or do it within the Windows environment, which is, you know, just makes life easier. 
In my mind, the Gigabyte B450M DS3H serves two audiences. Those who are on such a tight budget that they have allotted a certain amount per component and can't waiver, opening up more options, and those who want the highest end GPU and CPU and are willing to make some sacrifices on other components, such as with the motherboard. If you don't care about such things as RGB, USB 3.2, Gen 2, or quality of life features, such as a clear CMOS button, dedicated power and reset buttons, or QR code reader, then the DS3H will serve you just fine. Because it does support AMD's entire range of CPUs, and you can pretty much install any GPU you want onto this motherboard, making the call to spend less so that you can spend more elsewhere might be the right call for you. Having said all that, I do want to provide you with some reasons why I would and wouldn't recommend this motherboard for you to purchase. Here's why I wouldn't recommend the DS3H. It's priced too closely to other B450 motherboards. Take ASRock's Pro 4 and Gigabyte's own Aorus M motherboard into account. Priced anywhere from $79 to $84, both these motherboards have more features than the DS3H. Both have more fan headers, support USB 3.2 Gen 2, and in the case of the Gigabyte board has two M.2 slots. Additionally, Gigabyte just released the B550M version of the DS3H. It has two M.2 slots, one of which is PCI 4.0 enabled for those insane data speeds. There's a dedicated Q flash button so you can update the BIOS without even having a CPU in installed. There's three PWM fan headers and a total of five RGB ports, two ARGB and three RGB. Personally, I would have removed one of those RGB ports and put in a fourth fan header, but Gigabyte, you do you. This is why recommending the B450M DS3H is so difficult. Instead, I'd tell you just to save up an extra 20 bucks over the next couple weeks to expand your motherboard options. Okay, so you've heard why you shouldn't buy the DS3H, but what are the reasons that you should buy it? Well, much like the ORSM, it comes down to one word, and that's expansion. The DS3H supports Ryzen, Ryzen Plus, and Ryzen 2 CPUs all the way up to the beastly 16-core 32-thread 3950X. There are four DIMM slots allowing you to install 64 gigs of RAM, which is plenty for many content creators. There are three PCI slots allowing you to add in more cards beyond just a discrete GPU, and the rear and internal I.O. allow for a plethora of peripherals to be added. And finally, and you just can't escape it, price. $72.99 is very compelling and very affordable. Even if you can't find it at that price and can only find it at let's say $76 or $77.99, it's still an affordable choice that allows you to put that money you didn't spend either in your pocket or towards another component. What would you do? Would you save up to buy a more feature-rich motherboard or would you buy the B450M DS3H, spend a little less and put that money towards another component in your build? Let me know in the comments below. That's all I have to say about Gigabyte's B450M DS3H motherboard. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit that like button if you liked what you saw. If you didn't like what you saw, hit that dislike button twice and share any questions or comments you have down below. I'll be using this motherboard in a future PC build, so hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.